You're here, I'm queer, and welcome back to my channel. So Disney has been revitalizing their classic films from Cinderella, Maleficent, Beauty and the Beast, and so much more. There, you know, there's a lot coming. And of course, a live-action Lion King was bound to happen. Lion King, I think, is one of the saddest stories, and for some reason, Disney is able to convey a tragedy when animals are the subjects. I don't know, I feel like they have more leeway to create sadder plots. I remember Bambi, Dumbo, and the Fox and the Hound were all so sad, and Lion King is one of them in my opinion. The live action movie was like watching a National Geographic film, it was like a documentary almost. It was so realistic from the environment and of course the animals. Although I do wish that they made the realism a bit more stylized to fit the original animated film. Like the original was so fun and it was so like vibrant and colorful. I also felt like it lost some fantasy aspect to it, but I guess their goal was really really realistic so you know they did that for this doll however i will be making of course scar you guys know that i love my villains without them there wouldn't be a hero they are often so exaggerated when it comes to their mannerisms and also their appearance and i am so here for it my vision for him is obviously a personified look, we're not going to be repainting a lion, and I drew lots of inspiration from the original animated film and a lot of African inspired clothing. He is more cerebral and you know he plots all of the things he wants to do and he doesn't really get his own hands dirty so I gave him a sleeker cleaner design. I gave him the gold coils to represent his version of armor while maintaining a royalty look. These coils are my favorite because they are represented not just in Africa but also in Asia and I'm just so obsessed with them. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I will be using a Fresh Squad doll by Dr. Lisa for this project. I believe the males are currently sold out though so I got this one from eBay. They have great articulation and his braids are so nice. Unfortunately, they are not the color and style we need so we need to remove them and reroute him. Let's also remove his factory paint using acetone or nail polish remover. Now with this deep blue acrylic yarn, I will be rerouting him and give him dreads. I usually don't reroute the entire head because it can look overwhelmingly full, um, especially with styles like this, but I wanted a full main look, so you know, let's go for it. It's easier to remove than to reroute, so we can do that. Now let's secure it using Fabri-Tac glue. After the glue dries overnight, I added some blacks to his hair to give it more dimension. Then we can finally work on his face. Of course, his face has been sprayed with Mr. Super Clear or MSC before we can give him a face up. I start by sketching the design of how I want him to look and we cannot forget his famous scar of course. So instead of a pitch black color for his hair and brows, I gave him a hint of blue to complement the orange hues of his outfit. I'm using chalk pastels to give his eyes a smoky effect.
This head mold is so beautiful because it is so easy to give him a chiseled look. The main goal was to make his eyes look like it's almost glowing, so I just made sure that his eyes are very smoky and that his eyes are clean and crisp. His lips were black in the animated version, so I decided to mirror that for this doll. I also gave his lips another scar, so it can be like, okay, we get it, you have scars, that's why that's your name. We get it. <laughs> and now we are finally done with his face, and I have to say that he looks menacing. I am so obsessed. Ugh, it's like, what are you planning, huh? Like, what are you, like, what are you planning inside your head? Like, that's the look. <laughs> because his torso will be showing, I decided to give it some body blushing. This will make the muscles pop out more, and also give his skin some dimension. Again, I decided to give him a claw mark on his heart to represent the tragedy of his crown being taken away by Simba. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just wanted to give him a claw scratch since it looks cool, you know? It, and it's, you know what, it's to pay homage to Claudina 9. It's for Claudina. Hala hala! <laughs> Of course, what evil villain doesn't have a perfect manicure and pedicure? I gave him black claws since it's very apparent in the animated film. Literally, I feel like he's the only one who actually has his nails out all the time. Or maybe it's just overgrown. It's overgrown. And I do believe that it does give him a more elegant flair. Now it's time for his costume. Be prepared. Because, <laughs> oh, my voice cracked. Because, again, I will be sewing this. So I made this pants pattern that it almost looks like their harem pants. And I swear this is like my go-to pants for guys. And I am using this rich rust fabric for it. I definitely poked a lot of my epidermis when I was sewing, so I was like, Christian? As thick as you are, pay attention! You know, you have to be careful. Now we have our pants, I want to age them up a bit, and I'm using acrylic paint for that, of course. For the loincloth-like part in front, I have this arrow shape that I'm gonna cut from a white cotton fabric. This one I sewed doubled, so in the end I flipped it inside out. I then diluted gold acrylic paint with water to give it a gilded look. 
Then I painted the design. This was inspired by a lot of African textiles. They are usually very bold and vibrant. Of course, I aged it up as well to match his pants. For the skirt part, I'm using this hemp cord to make it look like straws. I just tied them together to create the skirt, and I actually wanted this to look like porcupine quills, but using toothpicks was really painful. Trust me, I tried. Don't do it. So I did paint the cords to imitate a porcupine quill. Now for the belt. I'm using the same cotton fabric and I gathered them to create a layered look. I then painted it this oxblood color. After everything dries, I decided to sew them together, yes, sewing, not glue, for an easier application. For the bird skulls, I made them with epoxy sculpt. And it was actually nice since it looked organic, it looked realistic because it was not a uniform sculpt, like different beak sizes, different shapes, it was amazing. I then just super glued them onto this gilded cord. For his sandals, I'm using Warbla for a fitted and stable fit. I cut a long strip for the straps and also two pairs of soles because I want to layer them and have a thicker sole. I heat up the Warbla with my heat gun to make it malleable. Then I just molded it onto his foot. You can then remove it after it's cooled down, and then I heat up the soles and I just press the foot in. I did super glue the straps to give it a proper security, just to make sure, you know, I can be too sure. Now let's go paint this brown. I wanted to give him a mask to pay homage to the Broadway version of Lion King, and I am making a mold out of this necklace I've kept for so many years. I think it's been a decade. I'm happy that it finally came in handy. Using this easy mold silicone putty, I mixed two equal parts together to activate it and I pressed it onto the lion. I just needed the face of it, so the mane didn't really matter. After like 20 minutes, the mold should be done and I whipped out my epoxy sculpt and I pressed that onto the mold. Now this was more of a 20 hour wait time rather than a 20 minute process, so yeah, we gotta wait. I also made sure to get a thin cast so it's not too heavy. I am so in love with how it came out, but he definitely m looks more like a Mufasa Simba, so let's go ahead and scarify him. Let's add his iconic scar and give him an angrier look. I'm also going to remove the excess mane. With Warbla, I'm adding these strips to hook onto his hair, but I'm also using it to create a spiked mane. Then I take my hot glue to give the mane some texture, and to also add his widow's peak. 
This was definitely a challenge to hold and to paint, but it was a joy to give him the animated look. I almost forgot his whiskers, so I'm using this thin wire for it to match the entire vibe of the mask. Now we are done with his mask, and I love how it came out. It's definitely intimidating and quite deadly, you know. Now let's dress him up and add his accessories. I got this patterned faux fur for his arm cuffs, and it will peek out behind the gold coils. This gold wire is from the jewelry aisle of Michael's and it is the really soft kind so it's not hard to kind of bend. And he has it coiled mainly on his arms, neck and also his legs. Now to represent his tail, I took this rope and tied it around his waist. I glued some yarn, um, it's the same yarn, and I brushed it out to really give it the tail look. Also gave him some gold earrings to match the entire look. I wasn't able to get a good angle, but I also accessorized his hair with gold rings and cuffs. And actually, the small rings are jewelry jump rings, and the cuffs are real hair cuffs. This just made the color of his hair stand out a lot more, and you can't go wrong with more bling. Now for his fur cape thingy, I got this long faux fur fabric and it's really nice since it has different colors in it which makes it look more realistic and more natural. And now we are done with Scar. <laughs> 